come to where in this active text, Paul is you know, he's saying that he would be uh, uh, all things of all men, and then he comes actually down, and he implies the Christian life as running a race because they were familiar with you know running races and all and that culture. So he impl- implies it in verse number 24. He says, Know ye not that, uh, that they which run in a race run all, but, uh, but one receiveth uh, uh, the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So in my mind, when I read that, I started thinking about running. What were some of my first experiences of running? And I don't know if you've ever been in the service before, but I have. And they got me all off of the bus. Drill sergeant was in my face, on my back, everything else. I was dragging my bags off. And when I got off of the bus, there was a hill there. And he called me everything but a white man, told me to get up that hill right away. I mean, just running up the hill, down the hill, up the hill, down the hill, just trying to encourage me to run. Huh? <laughs> Encouraging me to run. But I found out er- uh, actually later that he was teaching me to be persistent. So if you're going to run a race, you've got to learn to be persistent. You've got to run with endurance. You've got to build up yourself. You've got to gain confidence that you're able to run the race. Paul, Paul in, in, in first, uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4, he said, I've uh, fought a good fight. I finished my course. Is that right? So he was implying that, look here, that it was persistence that made Paul continue in the race. He learned early that there was going to be some hardships that he was going to have to endure and continue in the fight. So in 2021, look here, it's not going to be easy. Uh, I mean, we can all already see it. There's trouble on the horizon. Huh? A trouble in the White House. They're probably going to be trouble in your neighborhood. Yeah. They're going to be trouble. Right. And if you are not uh, grounded and rooted and to the place that you're going to be persistent for the cause of Christ, yeah. you're going to fail. Right. Look here, and I've never seen, I've never seen anybody who quit them. Uh, you run out there and give them a trophy. Huh? Yeah, right. Huh? He said, run that you may obtain. Yeah. Is that what he said? Right. Hey, so if you, you, you've got to learn to be persistent if you're going to obtain what Christ has for you. Yeah, right. And then I, I thought about this. I thought about, you know, whenever I used to run in, in the Army, and uh, look here, we had a drill sergeant, and they were some uh, you rather large individuals in our, in, in our company, in our, in, in our, our squad. And we'd start out running two miles. Huh? Start out running t- two miles. And if any of those rather large fellows fell out, he'd say, left face. He'd say, left face. He'd say, left face. And we'd go right back and pick those guys up. Huh? Huh? Still teaching us to be persistent. But I found out there was a lot of perspiration. Huh? Yeah. It's going to be a lot of perspiration in, in, in the running. Yeah. In the running. Some people don't like it. They don't like to perspire. Huh? Well, you're in the wrong race. Huh? I promise you, you're in the wrong race if you do not like to perspire. Huh? Our, our Lord proves it. Our, our Lord proves it. T- turn to Luke chapter 22. I, I never... Looked at this like I I looked at it, Mott, until you told me about God's will be done in 2021. Huh? Luke chapter 22, verse number 44. 
It said, and, and being in an agony. It's like he's entered into something. It said, being in an agony. So he's entered into something like a struggle or a, a race or a course that he has been set on. It says what? And, and, and being entered in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. Our Lord give us a perfect example. Perfect uh, 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 example. Look here, the race is not going to be e easy. You've got to enter into it. You've got to be willing to agonize. You've got to be willing to struggle. You've got to be willing to pay the cost. Why? To do the will of God. The will of God in your life. Hey, it's not going to be easy. It, it's it's going to be hard. But hey, hey, our Lord sweat great drops of blood for us. Huh? Is that not a perfect example? Is that not more of a reason to run a good race? Hey, whenever you think about how hard it is or what, uh, whatever comes your way, you think about the, that verse. He entered into agony. He entered in. Willfully. He said in the, in the next verse, hey, not my will be done, but your will. He wanted to finish the course. He wanted to finish the race. Not because of his own will personally there. It's, he's speaking as a man, but uh, for the will of the Father. Amen. Speaking as God's Son. He would, he would be willing to run the race even if it was agonizing. And that's what we got to be able to do. Huh? Hey, have you ever not... Have you ever seen the, you, 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 these runners who have uh, pulled hamstrings and muscles and they just keep on running keep on running that's what it implies that same kind of agony same kind of suffering and it may come your way this year but we've got that example he was he was willing to do it uh, if he's willing to do it we ought to be willing to do it because huh? who did he do it for he did it for me he did it for me I don't know about you, but everything he's ever done for me, man, I have not deserved it. Not, not, not deserved it. And for him to go into, enter into that kind of agony, why shouldn't I be willing to? Hey, we're supposed to be willing to suffer for him. Huh? If he suffered, why should we not also suffer? Amen? And it may come to that this year. But in the suffering, in the suffering, he'll be with you. He'll be with us. Amen. Hey, I, I can't hardly take that when I when I, I I think about that. Think about him agonizing for me when I was in the hey when, whenever he was in the garden there. Hey, he had me on his mind, on his heart, huh? Praying, Thy will be done. <laughs> man, I'm about to lose it, hey man. I'm telling you. Hey, we ought to be willing to agonize, sweat. Uh, suffer for, for, for the cause of Christ. Amen. And then I, I thought about in the, you in the race there, uh, if you're going to run, you got to have a, a purpose. A purpose. Hey, a, a, a man who starts a race without a purpose will never finish the race. Never. You know, and I, and I thought about this. thought about it in my own life. Whenever I began my race for Christ, been 35 years now. Hmm? Hey, the reason why I keep on doing what I'm doing, Brother Doug, because I was a man with no purpose, no purpose in my life, no purpose in life. And whenever the Lord saved me, saved me and gave me purpose, give me purpose. Hey, hey, I was a Christian 15 years before he ever called me into service. Huh? Hey, had a brand new house, had brand new tr trucks, I, I'm business, uh, everything, standing out in my front yard in my brand new house. Because I'd ask the Lord whenever I got out of prison, I said, now let me be prosperous in front of my peers. I stand out there, just had, just had to actually build it, new truck and new, new 
dump truck in the, in the driveway there and stand there and I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at everything. And the Lord said, now what have you done for me? Huh? And I had to say, nothing. Nothing, Lord. I was going over to a little prison camp on Sunday morning, huh? giving my, my testimony and singing. I wasn't called to preach. I told the preacher that. Amen? But I had three or four little preacher boards under me, and they'd preach. But I wasn't doing nothing. Wasn't doing nothing. Didn't, I didn't feel like I had, had really ful uh, fulfilled any purpose. And then all of a sudden, he started to burden me about the mission. And when he put me in, in the ministry, I didn't, I didn't put my, myself in there. He put me in there. Right. He gave me purpose. Yeah. Greatest purpose in the world. Yeah. Witness to someone else. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of right. Jesus Christ. Huh? Yeah. It is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Amen. Yeah. Now, to what he said? Yep. He said, Paul said he gave me purpose. Yep. Huh? He said, I was killing Christians, but now I'm bringing them to Christ. <laughs> hey, 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 he gives us purpose to run this race. Hey, without him giving me purpose, I wouldn't run. I wouldn't have run half a mile. With half a mile, you brother Jordan, I wouldn't run. He gave me purpose. I, I, I tell this all the time, you know, I, 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 and, and, and I feel the presence of God in my life. Huh? Tell us all, I can live. I can live without my wife. I don't want to, brother. I don't want to. And she don't want to live without me. I told her, I said, now, whenever I, I, I die, she said, you ain't leaving me here. <laughs> she said, huh? I said, I could, but, I, but, but I couldn't live without the, the presence of God in my life. And, 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 and really, I don't think I could live without, without having some purpose to serve God, some, some, something that he wanted me to do. Hey, this 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 Christian life, this this uh, this calling on, on my life to 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 help people. Hey, it's the best life in the world. <laughs> I tell all the men all the time, I've got the best life in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best life, yeah. best life. Just being a Christian, fulfilling my purpose yeah. for the will of God for my life. Yeah, Man, if you if you'll think about what God has purpose for your life. Hey, he's got a purpose for your life. Hey, 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 he can use a plumber. He can use a, a, a carpenter. He, he can use anybody. Hey, 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 before, before he called me into the ministry, I've told this up here before. I, I was roofing. I, I, I was at a house over there, come off uh, of the roof t to get uh, some nails. Uh, electrician come up to me and said, ain't you Rocky Shelton? I said, yeah. He said, don't you go over to Faith Baptist? I said, yeah. He said, I heard you sing over there some. I said, every once in a while. He said, now they was carpenters and plumbers. Everybody was in there, just hammering and nailing and all. He said, well, let's hear you. I said, uh, once I was lost in sin's black night. And there was no way I could make my wrongs right. And the old accuser to the Lord did cry, He is a sinner, and now he must die. But then I heard a voice say, Father, I'll go, and I'll pay a sin debt in Calvary's floor, and I'll bear in my body the marks of the cross to save this child who's sin sick and lost. And it's still the blood that saves from sin. Oh, yes, it's still. The blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea. It's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. I said, now how's that, buddy? Hey, they wasn't a, they wasn't a hammer hammering. They wasn't a, they wasn't a, everybody was just looking. Huh? Huh? Hey, I was fulfilling my purpose before he ever called me into the ministry. Hey, he, he's, 
He's called us all just to be witnesses. Right. Witnesses for the glory of God. Right. Amen. I teach all uh, of the men at the mission. I said, look here. Hey, don't try to figure out what the will of God is for your life. I'll tell you exactly what it is. The will of God for your life is for you to bring Him glory. Right. Right. Don't make no difference what you're doing. Right. What you're doing. Right. The will of God is for you to bring Him glory. Yep. Yep. That's the purpose Good. of your life. Good. Amen. Amen. And hey, hey, if you remember that you have a purpose for being here, a purpose for serving God, yeah. hey, that race would be a whole lot easier. Sure, sure. Hey, Amen. Hey, he, hey, hey, he tells us that. He tells, look here, he told in, in Philippians chapter 2, he was telling them that they sh should continue and be a light. Yeah. And in verse number 16, he tells them that you are hurling forth the word of life. Yeah. In other words, hey, if, if, if you just continue in whatever you're doing, yeah. just keep a testimony. Just Hey, just be who you are. Yeah. Right. You're going to hurl forth the word of life. Yeah. Right. What's going to happen? Somebody's going to get saved. Yeah. Hey, so somebody, so somebody's going to get in the kingdom of, of God yeah. because you fulfilled your purpose. Right. Amen? Ain't that right? Yeah. Hey, People make too much excuses for not serving uh, the Lord. Well, I can't do that. I can't. Some of the men say, well, I, I could never witness nobody. I could never. I said, look here, you're talking to Elmer Fudd. You ain't, you, you ain't got no excuse. Huh? You ain't got no excuse. Huh? If, if he calls somebody like me, if he lets me witness, don't tell me you can't do it. Right. Amen? Because I know you can. Yeah. Amen? Good. Hey, you can. Right. Just fulfill your purpose. Just continue to run that race for the cause of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants for us. Amen. Hey, but I, hey, I, I thought about that. That, that that's, that's, that's one of the reasons. And then I, 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 I thought about this. I said if a man runs, he runs in a race, usually they have rules or to keep it homiletically correct, it precepts, principles. Yep. You, you got to run according to the precepts and principles of, of the Lord. You've got to be willing to do what God tells you to do the right way. I, 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 I read or I, I, I heard a, a report. There was a, there was a big race, you know. Uh, I think it was uh, the Boston Marathon you, where this guy had, had darted out and then about three blocks from the finish line he'd come back in and, you know, he run across and they all applauded him and everything else you because he had some kind of record time. But when they got to look, to looking at at the course, the cameras on the course, they found out that he had darted out and cheated. What happened? They stripped him of his title, huh? Because he didn't run according to the rules, according to what God has set forth. And I said, I said, Lord, that's a good illustration, but I need some scripture for that. Amen? So turn to Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse number 32. This is what the psalmist said. He said, I will run the way of thy commandments. When thou hast enlarged my heart, huh? When you really get right, when the when the Lord really sets up uh, on the throne of your heart, He said you don't have to worry about how you're gonna run. He said you're gonna run right, Amen. Gonna run the way of His commandments. A real Christian, He'll run the way of the commandments of the Lord. He won't take any shortcuts. He won't try to try to. Uh, to uh, arrange stuff to for it to be different or 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 new or anything else. Hey, I just think I take the old path, yeah. huh? I stay in the old path, running yeah. the old uh, the old way. I I'll, I'll run it in the way that my forefathers have run for years and years and years. Hey, it still works. Yeah. It still yeah. works just to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ just to tell old sinners that they're lost and they need a savior amen hey I don't know about you but I'm going to take the old path amen hey it ain't changed amen hey it's still the same hey hey I, I think about when I got saved hey and 
When I think of, about that path I was on and how, how the Lord saved me, hey, it's just as fresh today as it was when I got saved. Yes, sir. I mean, He rises up in me and, hey, and renews me. Huh? Because I'm willing to stay in the old path, the old way. It still works, amen. It still works. I don't care what this new age says. I don't care what they do or whatever. They, just leave me alone. Huh? I'm going to take the old path. I'm going to do what God wants me to do according to the scriptures. Man, hey, uh, a, 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 a lot of this new age stuff is not according to the scripture. Amen. They get away from the scripture. They've lost me. Hey man, I, I, I'm not going to agree with it. But if they stay with the scriptures, I'll go with you. Hey, they don't have to dot every I or cross every T just like I do. But they got to they, they believe in, in the blood, yeah. virgin birth, and the resurrection. Yeah. Hey Amen. Yeah. If I'm going to right. fellowship with them, right. if I'm going to run with them, yeah. right. that's what they got to believe. Right. Hey Amen. I'm, I'm going to stay in the old path. Yeah. Huh? I'm going I'm to run by the rules set forth by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He said, hey, that's his job yeah. is to lead me into all righteousness. Right. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> If it's hey, if it don't have the Holy Ghost in it, I don't want to associate with it. Right. Amen. Is that right? I don't like that happy clappy and doing the tambourines that if it ain't no Holy Ghost, right. huh? Right. It's boring to me. Yeah. Huh? And my my wife, we've been in some services in some churches, brother Doug, and my wife will poke me and said, "Smile." I said, <laughs> "I said, what's there to smile about?" Amen. <laughs> I mean, I mean. I can't help it. My 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 countenance will tell on me. Yeah. Amen. I just if the Holy Ghost ain't in, I I just I'm just playing. I can't help it. Amen. I ain't gonna put it on. Amen. I just ain't gonna do that. I want it real. I want it real, and I want it by the rules. Amen. That's how I want it. I I, I preached this message like I said up there that night, and every, everything went real good. But I, I, I told, uh, told uh, Brother Sidney that I was going to be done with this point until these girls sung this song.
Yes. that song and as I heard that song I, I was mulling over this message you know the points everything and them girls were singing that song singing it live and man in a moment in a moment a twinkling of an eye he, he just flooded my soul flooded my soul and I started looking back over my life over the last 35 years and I how did I run this race and how, how hey, circumstances had come up and he, he was right there with me. Hey, never left me a time, never left me alone. Hey, he never forsook me. He never forgot me. Hey, he never, hey, he, he never, never blamed me. Hey, he never did anything, but he was just right there with me. Hey, I got a reason why I should keep on running this race. Hey, because I got a partner, Brother Doug. Hey, I got a partner who goes with me every step of the way, every moment, every morning, every day. Every day he's with me. Never leave me, never forsake me. But he promised me that. He said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. Amen. Hey, so why shouldn't I be willing to just continue to run this race? Huh? It's a whole lot easier when you got a partner. Yeah. He's given me a wonderful partner yeah. in my wife. I wouldn't trade her for nothing. She may not say the same about me, but anyway. Hey, but sometimes you need a partner who's not in the flesh. Sometimes you need a partner who knows everything about you and loves you anyway. Huh? Loves you anyway. Caresses you when nobody else can't. Huh? Understand you whenever you can't even got the words to tell him what's wrong. Huh? That's the kind of partner he's been. That's the kind of person he's been. Hey, that's the kind of God he's been to me. Why shouldn't I continue to run the race because I've got the most wonderful partner in the world? Amen. Jesus. Jesus said, never leave me, never forsake me. Now, I'm telling you, over the last 35 years, he's proved it. Proved it. Proved it. He said, try me, prove me. See if I won't pour you out a blessing that you're unable to receive. Yep. And I promise you, in the last 35 years, I've tried him. And he's proved himself faithful every time. Every time. Every time. I know, got no complaints about the person I'm, I'm running with. Amen. He's been good to me. Good to me. Hey, I hope you, hope you understand this year. You've got to have some persistence. Huh? It's going to get tough. You, you, you might sweat a little bit. But there's been one to go before you who's already sweated for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Great drops of blood. Yeah. He's, he's did that. Did that. And then he, hey, just remember the purpose that he's got for you in your life. Every one of us has a purpose. I don't care from the least to the greatest. There's a purpose. If you just, hey, if you just told somebody Jesus loves you, you say, Brother Rocky, that don't work. Well, ask Jerry Allen that then. Yeah. Amen. That's what, I, that's what I told him about 28 years ago. Jesus loves you, Jerry. That next week, Jesus proved him. Proved it. Proved that he loved Jerry. That next Sunday, he couldn't wait to get to the altar. Huh? I mean, we were singing in the choir whenever he come in. and Hey, we got the one verse in the choir, and he fell up in the altar. Crying, crying and squalling. I, ju I jumped down there with him and prayed with him 
when he come up bawling, he said, I love you, Rocky. He had never told me he loved me. Amen? Chicken fighters and, and all that stuff, they don't tell each other they love them. But he did after he got saved. Yes. Amen? Yes. Hey, give you a purpose. Yes. Purpose. Yes. huh? And then, hey, and then just run by the precepts and principles of God's Word. Yes. Hey, he'll keep you straight. Yes. He'll keep you straight. You don't have to worry if, you, if you're going to run off track or not. Right. You don't have to worry. Right. You, you don't have to worry if you're going to fall or not. Right. Huh? Right. He's going to hold you up with the right hands of his righteousness. Yes. Huh? Yes. Jude said he's able to keep you from falling. Yes. Huh? Hey, that's the only reason why I ain't went back 35 years. Because huh? he upholds me with the right hand of his righteousness. Right. Amen. Yes. That's what it is. That's what, yes, sir. Hey, and he'll be, hey, he'll have a great partner. Great partner. Hey, don't forget about your partner. Amen. Amen. I, hey, I don't know if that helped you, but hey, it helped me. It, it helped me because it's from the Lord. Amen. When he gives me something, I, I appreciate it because I'm the, uh, the least of the, of the least. And, and, and he let me get blessed and let me bless somebody else. I'm telling you, I'm happy about it. Amen. I, I'm done, Brother Doug. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.